You really think I'm cute? I think you're gorgeous, fam. I could gush about your beauty for hours. Hmm, but let's see, who should I pick next? Hmm, I've already picked my favorite. I'm kind of really curious as to Eros's story. I'd, I'd love to know what's up with him. So let's have fun with Eros. Going with Eros, huh? Well, the other options don't look any better. At least you can easily beat Eros up if he tries to drink your blood again. You stand in front of Eros's door. You gulp, feeling a tad nervous. Is this really a good idea? It's not too late to back out now. That guy did try to drink your blood the other day. Ah! What was that? The scream came from Eros's room. With no hesitation, you kick the door open. <laughs> I'll save you, baby! What's wrong? Eros is draped over his bed, sobbing loudly. Why me? Why? Why? Out of all the worst possible things that could happen, this is the worst possible thing ever. Okay, Rarity, calm down. <laughs> you rush over to Eros. What happened? Are you okay? I've lost my diamond-encrusted lavender ribbon. Aw. Eros then dramatically flops back onto his bed and continues to sob loudly. Aww. Is this guy for real? Or well, that thing sound, sounds very expensive and sentimental. You feel one of your eyes twitch. How can I finish my latest creation if I can't find it? Wait, maybe you can work with this. Um, I can help you look for it. Eh, uh, what makes you think you'll find it if I can't? And besides, why would you want to help me anyway? You want something out of it, don't you? Ugh, this is gonna be really difficult when I go on a date with Mammon. <laughs> Mailed! He figured you out. Quick, act dumb! What are you talking about? I just want to help you. Right. Sure, sweetheart. Listen, darling. I've been around long enough to know that no one does something nice just because. So, what do you want? Well, might as well be honest and tell him. I want you to help me with the chores. Mm hmm? Eros is dead silent. He stares at you, unblinkingly. And then, suddenly... <laughs> oh! Oh, that is rich! You want me to help you? <laughs> you stand there in silence, feeling your face become hot from embarrassment. I, I, I figured he was going to laugh at me. You regret ever trying this. You turn around and start to head towards the door. Hey, wait. You pause. Maybe I can help you if you help me. You see, I have a dress that needs to be finished in time for an upcoming masquerade ball. My client is a very important person, and they expect nothing less than perfection. I thought I would be able to handle it just fine on my own, but, uh, turns out this is too much for me. And I could really use an extra set of hands. So, you want me to help you make a dress? He really is, Rarity! Exactly, darling. And in return, I'll help you with your chores for the whole week. I, I doubt he'd help, but I don't know. Maybe. So, what do you say? Deal? I don't know a lot about fashion and sewing. Don't worry, darling. I can teach you. Well, alright then. Eros claps his hands. Fantastic, darling. Okay, so where was the last place you saw your ribbon? Eros closes his eyes as he tries to remember. Hmm. Maybe, uh... Wait. Aha! His loud exclamation startles you, almost causing you to fall over. You remember where it is? I think so. I remember having it while I was in Eris's garden. 
His garden is absolutely fantastic, darling. But I should warn you that Ares' plants aren't exactly... normal. What do you mean by that? I've seen it briefly before, and it didn't look weird to me. Oh, sure. At first glance, it looks normal. But, um... It's hard to explain, darling. You'll understand when we get there. Just don't freak out. I probably will. You don't like the way he phrased that. You follow Eros, not wanting to get lost in the mansion. Seriously, how big is this place? Better find out, cause you gotta clean it. Finally, you arrived at Ares's garden. Now that you aren't running for your life, you can finally appreciate the garden's beauty. It's filled with all kinds of different roses. There are climbing roses, hybrid tea roses, grandiflora roses, ooh, floribunda roses, polyantha roses, and miniature roses, just to name a few. Nothing about the garden seems to be out of the ordinary to you. Eros was probably just messing with you, trying to scare you. Mm-hmm. Hmm, it shouldn't be too hard to find. The ribbon isn't easy to miss. So why did you bring your ribbon here? Oh, I sometimes like to come here to find some inspiration. I always keep my materials with me, because I like to quickly sketch out my ideas and start working on it while it's still fresh in my mind. Oh, he's so talented. I fear I might forget it later if I don't. Best to strike while the iron is hot, you know. Yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> I've woken up at 3 a.m. and had to scramble for my sketchbook. Yeah, I think I understand what you mean. I'm kind of like that myself. I'm no fashion designer, but I do like to write. Sometimes I'll get a good idea of a scenario in my head, and I have to quickly write it down so I won't forget about it later. Glad to know someone else gets it. But you seriously do need to keep up with your stuff. All right, all right. I'll be sure to do that from now on. Oh, I should probably warn you. Some of these flowers can be quite dangerous. So try not to tick them off. Don't make the flowers bad. That would have been great to know beforehand. You know, before we're surrounded by them. Eros just giggles at your comment. The urge to punch this guy is getting stronger and stronger. But he's so fashionable and pretty. As you and Eros search the garden, you come across a beautiful white rose that is sitting under a big tree. I think it's suspicious. Its petals glow in the moonlight. It's probably the most beautiful rose you've ever seen. My, what a lovely flower. You bend down to touch the petals. The rose slaps you with its leaves. <laughs> it's like, don't touch me. <laughs> oh, oh, it did. Oh, okay. Oh, snap, the rose is talking. Don't touch me. Ah, it talked. <laughs> you grabbed onto Eros for dear life. He quickly pushes you away. Hey, hey, watch the hair. The, the, the flower. It talked. Yeah, so remember when I said the plants here aren't exactly normal? This is what I meant. How? It's a long story. You see, Ares found an injured fairy in his garden one day. Fairies? Fairies are real too? Fairies! <sighs> um, rude. I wasn't done talking yet. Anyways, he found an injured fairy in his garden one day and patched them up. This made the fairies grow to like him and trust him. Ever since then, a lot of fairies have been living in Ares' garden, making everything that grows here flourish. And also made some of the plants talk. Great. This mansion has talking plants, too. If any of them start singing about wanting to eat human flesh, you are out of here. Wait. Maybe these flowers might know what happened to Eros's ribbon. One of them is bound to know at least something, right? It wouldn't hurt to ask. Hey, um, flower? My name is White Rose. Right, uh, White Rose. Might you by any chance have seen a purple lavender... lavender ribbon? 
A diamond encrusted lavender ribbon, to be precise. You sent Eros an annoyed glare. <laughs> yeah, what he said. Hmm, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. What do I get out of it? Listen, I got some banana water. Would you like that? I... what? I want something in return if I'm going to help you. Uh, you'll get the good feeling that you helped someone? Hmm. Oh, come on. All you have to do is tell us if you've seen the stupid ribbon or not. Hey, my ribbon isn't stupid. Give me something and maybe I will. Tear up the flower. Aw, oh, no, I don't want to do that. That's disrespectful to both Ares and the flower. I'll leave that for someone else to do. What you want, fam? What you want? You let out an annoyed sigh. Ugh, fine. What do you want? Hmm, I'm feeling rather thirsty. Bring me some water. Okay, well, that's not so bad. But only if it's from a golden watering can. I will not drink water from a rusty old can. That sounds like a rose, actually. I am a rose, not some weed. Never in your life did you want to rip up a flower so badly. Okay, fine. Golden watering can. You turned to Eros, who was busy looking at a compact mirror trying to fix his makeup. Hey! What? Eros finally breaks out of his trance and turns to look at you. Did she tell you where the ribbon is? No, she wants us to give her some water, but it has to be from a golden watering can. So, where is it? How should I know? I just come in here sometimes to look at the flowers. I don't do any gardening. Okay, well, let's go find Ares. He should know where it is. Ares went to town to get some supplies. He won't be back for a few hours. Ugh! I don't want to go on the hunt for another object. Hmm... Well, maybe one of the plants might know where it is. Oh no, is this gonna be like a fetch quest? One of them has to know at least something. Well, I guess it's worth a try. Gosh darn it. Okay. Ladies? 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 You and Eros walk over to a small rose bush. As you got closer, the roses suddenly perked up. Oh, a new visitor. Hello, hello. Hey, calm down. You'll scare her. Oh, Eros is here too. Hello, Eros. Hello, Eros. Oh, hello, darlings. How are you? Just fine. What brings you here? Are you two on a date? Are you dating? Pink? I'm sorry. He's too nosy for his own good. Uh, what? No. No, we're not on a date. Why would you think that? <laughs> you feel your face grow warm. Oh, no. We're not dating. I don't think I mistype. I don't know. You could be. Eros scoots closer to you. <laughs> you are kind of cute. E Eros? The roses giggle. Aww. You gently push Eros away from you. What? We're looking for a diamond encrusted ribbon. Have you seen it? Um, no. We haven't seen any ribbons lately. Well, have you at least seen a golden watering can? Hmm. I remember seeing Ares with it earlier, but I don't remember where he put it. Oh, I know, I know. You do? The fairies have it. Oh dear. Oh yes, they keep watch over Ares' garden tools and make sure no one steals them. Do you know where they could be? The purple rose points over to the left. Aww. It's a small garden filled with wildflowers that the fairies like. They call it the Tea Party Room. You can't miss it. Great. Thanks. You're welcome. Good luck finding it. Oh dear. You and Eros head down further into the garden. The garden is a lot bigger than you thought. After a few minutes of walking, you finally found the Tea Party Room. It's a small but very beautiful garden. It's filled with columbines, cow's lips, daisies, daylilies, forget-me-nots, and lady slippers. Oh, 
over by a small bush, you spot them. Ah, that's so cute! Oh my gosh, they're so precious! I'm losing my mind, they're so cute! And there's a little tiny baby one! I don't think I've ever seen a baby fairy in anything at all. Ladies, ladies, I'm sorry to bother you. A small group of fairies sat around a small mushroom, chatting among themselves. Oh, Are these nice fairies, or are these like labyrinth fairies? <laughs> um, excuse me. Ah! Uh, Eek! Wait, come back! The fairies quickly fled the scene, hiding amongst the flowers. The fairies only trust Ares. If you want to show them you mean no harm, you're going to need to give them something. Like what? Ugh, not sure. This is a fetch quest! Oh no! But we'd better find it or else we'll never get that watering can. Need I remind you that this is all to get the opinion of the White Rose who might not have seen it at all. And my poor ribbon will be lost forever. Ugh! But we're already looking for two items. I don't want to look for a third one. Okay then, you can go back and do your chores all by yourself. Mm. Let's get this over with. Now that's the spirit. Shut up, Eros. <laughs> the roses perk up when they see you and Eros again. Ah, oh, what's the matter? You seem down. The fairies are too scared of us. We can't talk to them. Oh dear, how awful. Hmm, I think Ares has a book about fairies. That might help. Check the animal sanctuary. It's right over there. The purple rose points to a small square white building. Ah, okay. Thanks. Gosh darn it. When you arrived at the building, you see that there is a small padlock on the door. Ugh. It looks like you'll need to input the correct password if you want to get in. Next to the lock, you see there is a small note written in sloppy handwriting. Ares must have written himself a hint in case he forgot the password. The note reads, Never resting, never still, moving silently from hill to hill. Hmm. It does not walk, run, or trot. All is cool where it is not. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. It's always cool where it is not? Maybe something... the sun? Oh snap, really? <laughs> I'm the king of riddles! Dang, I didn't think I was actually gonna get that. <laughs> you and Eros step inside. Ooh. The inside of the building looks like a forest. There are various woodland creatures running around. Is this inside... inside the mansion? What is this, Dracula's castle? There are foxes, rabbits, skunks, minks, deer, birds, and even a bear. You nervously take a step back. No need to worry, darling. They won't hurt you. Ares likes to take in wounded or sickly creatures and help make them feel better. Once they're fully healed, he releases them back into the wild. I'm supposed to be on a date with you, but I'm learning more about Ares than anything else. Wow, never thought that someone like Ares would do something like that. Ares may look scary, but trust me, the guy is really just a big softy deep down. Don't tell him I said that, or else he'll kick my butt. My gorgeous derriere. The animals curiously look at you as you step closer to them. Some of them ran away, while others were a little braver and got closer to smell you. Aww. Eros picks up a snow-white mink. He scratches behind one of its ears. This one is my favorite. I call her Mina. She reminds me of myself. Why? Because she's cute? And she has fluffy snow-white hair? Why? Because she's cute? I... uh... Eros's face turns a bright shade of pink. He tries to get his words out, but he keeps stuttering. Aww. W well of course I'm cute, but, but really, it's because she's sassy and knows what she wants. Like me. <laughs> you really think I'm cute? 
I think you're gorgeous, fam. I could gush about your beauty for hours. Yeah, I say you're like an 8 out of 10. Of course, if uh, if you're standing next to Beelzebub. <laughs> hey, I'm at least a 10. You let out a soft laugh. Well, I think you have an 8 out of 10 laugh, so, huh. Was that your best attempt at an insult? Shut up. I'm a little off my game today. Anyways, we should go find that book. As you investigate the area, something catches your eye. Lying down on the grass is a big, thick red book. It looks old and worn out, like it has been used quite a lot. On the front, there is a picture of a foxglove, and the title reads, The Guide to Fairies. Ooh! Ah, here it is! I found it! You quickly pick up the book and begin to flip through it. After a few seconds, you finally find the page you were looking for. It says here that fairies love sweet, natural fruits. Their favorite type of fruit are hawthorn berries, also known as pixie pears. Aww. Oh, Ares has some growing on the big tree. Great, let's go. Oh, that's adorable. The two of you head over to the middle of the garden, where the large hawthorn tree grows. Now that you're closer, you can see the hawthorn berries on the tree branches. Ooh, you couldn't see them before because the leaves were blocking them. However, the berries are way up too high for you to reach. Gosh darn it. You'll need to get a ladder or something to get them. Or Beelzebub. But you don't see a ladder anywhere in the garden, and you really don't want to go on another search quest. Hey, Eros, you can turn into a bat, right? Yes, you literally saw me do it when you first got here. I need you to turn to a bat. The berries are too high, and I can't reach them. Why, of course, darling. Really? You're honestly surprised that Eros agreed to help you so easily. You thought he would complain about getting berry juice all over him, or getting a bug in his hair. Well, sure. Wouldn't want you getting hurt now. You might fall down and break your arm while climbing, and that would be just awful. I would never forgive myself if I let someone pretty as you get hurt. You feel your cheeks turn warm. Thanks, Eros. You know, you're not so bad yourself. Oh, stop. You're making me blush. Now, let's get those berries. Oh. In a flash, Eros turns into a cute white bat. He flaps his wings and flies high up into the air. He quickly grabs a few berries and brings them back down. There, that should do it. Great, now let's go find those fairies. As you head off, you can't help but feel like Eros's bat form looks very familiar to you. Must be your imagination. <laughs> You enter the tea party room and see the fairy sitting around the mushroom table. Aww. Eek! Aww. Wait, wait. I mean no harm. I brought you some grub, gals. You gently set down the berries and take a few steps back, giving the fairy some space. The fairies fly over to the berries, inspecting them. One of them takes a bite, and their eyes lit up with joy. They quickly finish it off, leaving nothing but the seeds. Aww. The rest of the fairies eat the berries as well. So cute! So precious! One of the fairies comes closer to you. Who are you? Um, my name is Espoir. I'm the brother's maid for the week. We really need to borrow the golden watering can so we can water this flower. Hmm. The blue fairy thinks for a moment before nodding. Okay, as long as you promise to not take it out of the garden. Just leave it on the ground once you're done. We'll come pick it up later. Can you? Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, little babies. The fairies head off somewhere and quickly return with the golden watering can. Okay, now we can finally get your answer. Bet that flower doesn't know anything. Hey, we found the golden watering can. Don't tell me that we gotta put some, like, special water in it. Good for you. 
pour it down slowly, not too fast. I don't want my petals getting damaged. Just take deep breaths, resist the urge to rip the flower to pieces. No matter how satisfying that would be. You gently pour the water onto the white rose. Its petals begin to gently glow. Ooh. Ah, that's much better. I feel so refreshed now. Mm hmm. Hmm? Ahem. What? Aren't you forgetting something? What? You want to thank you? Listen here, flower. No, the ribbon! Where is the ribbon? Oh, that. Last time I saw it was with this guy. White Rose points one of its leaves at Eros. He sat over at that bench for an hour, and then left in that direction. The flower points over towards a blue door to the far left corner of the room. Hmm. Hmm. You mean, it's not even here? Nope. So we went through all of that? For nothing? Well, not nothing. You, you now know it's not here. If the cat in the hat is, has taught you anything, something the way to find the missing find something is to find out where it's, it's not. And it's not here. So that's good. Um, Espoir, you little... You charge forward at the flower, but Eros stops you before you can even grab it. Let me go! I'm gonna rip that stupid flower to shreds for wasting my time! Stupid flower, you're nothing but a dumb weed! <laughs> what did you just fluffing call me? Oh no. Hey, she started it. You really shouldn't have done that. Huh? Why? What's that flower gonna do? Oh, she's gonna do something, isn't she? How fluffing dare you! I am not a, a weed. weed! Oh snap. Suddenly, vines come shooting up from the ground, trying to grab you. Run! You quickly book it towards the door, trying to avoid any vines in your way. You sprinted straight ahead. Ah! Tried to go right. Vines stab you in the chest. Killing you instantly. Every rose has its thorns. Okay. Okay, that's fine. No, that's fine. That's fine. No, it's fine. You run to your right and narrowly avoid the rose's roots. You see the door up ahead and quickly run towards it. Ah! As soon as you and Eros were on the other side, you quickly slammed the door shut and locked it. We have some explaining to do to Ares, but she kind of started it. You pant heavily, trying to catch your breath. What the heck was that? Yeah, probably should have told you that White Rose does not take being called a weed too kindly. Are you alright? Are you okay? Is your pretty visage okay? I mean, I'm technically immortal, but... <sighs> what about you? Are you okay? Eris's face turns a soft shade of pink. Oh, um, yes. I I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Eros gives you a sweet smile. Oh no. Huh? What's wrong? You're bleeding. Uh-oh. You look down to see a cut on your leg. It's just a small cut. I'll be fine. You forget that you're in a mansion full of vampires. Eros rips off a piece of his shirt. Eros? What are you doing? He uses the piece of cloth to tie it around your leg, covering up the wound. There. That should stop the bleeding. But, Eros, your shirt. Oh, don't worry, darling. I have hundreds of these. Eros lets out a small giggle. <laughs> I'm more concerned about you than some silly old shirt. You return, Eros, with a soft smile of your own. Thanks, Eros. Uh, I can't believe that stupid flower used us. Well, at least we have a clue on where the ribbon could be. You look around to see you, and Eros are in an art gallery. Ooh, there's a couple faces I recognize here. Both are games I haven't played yet. The walls are covered with various different paintings. Some of them look strangely familiar to you. You're not sure why, but it feels like you've seen them somewhere before. 
Eh, it's probably nothing. <laughs> Who made these? Some of them were made by Hubris, while others were made by various different artists. <gasps> artists? Uh, d d hubris is an artist? Oh! Hubris paints? Every now and then, he will paint. It's a hobby of his that he enjoys. Helps get rid of the stress, or so he says. How many paintings are there? Who knows? Hubris keeps bringing in new ones every few weeks. I've lost count of how many there were years ago. Do you have a favorite? Hmm, well, there is one painting I like. It's called The Blushing Bride. It's a painting of a bride and a groom in a passionate embrace. Their faces and any other identifying details are obscured, but the passionate intensity of their kiss remains obvious. Oh, that's beautiful. Arrow sighs, a small smile on his lips. That sounds lovely. I hope I get to see it. I can't help but feel a little jealous. Jealous? Why? Uh-oh. Eros's expression suddenly becomes somber. His eyebrows are lower and pulled closer together, and his lips are drawn in tightly. I, uh, rather not talk about it. Anyways, how about you? See anything you like so far? Eros looks back at you with a smile, but something about it makes you feel like it's forced. Not yet. Haven't gotten the time to look yet. But first, we need to find your ribbon. Ah, right, the ribbon. Anyways, according to the flower, this is where I went to next. Shouldn't be too hard to find. I think. Wow, that sure helps me feel convinced. Well, the art gallery is pretty big, if I'm honest. Not to mention the weird puzzles and traps that Mammon has all over the place. Gosh dang it! I'm sorry, the what? Wait, you don't know? I thought Hubris had told you. No, he didn't. He just kind of threw a maid costume at me and said get to work. Well, Mammon has set up weird puzzles and traps all over the mansion. Who let Mammon play Resident Evil 2? Who let him play that? Who gave him ideas? It's for security reasons. You know, in case if anyone were to break into our mansion and try to steal anything. Many of the traps Mammon has are dangerous to humans, so it's best you keep your guard up. And possibly save quite often. Would have been nice to have known earlier, but thanks. If you ever get the chance to see Hubris again, you're going to have a nice long chat with him. Oh, yes I will. With a heavy bat to beat him with. <laughs> As you two search the gallery, you come across a familiar face. Morpheus, what are you doing here? Oh, it's you two. Your sleeve is torn off. Yeah, I know. I did that to myself. Oh, okay. Did you clean up my room yet, human? I have a name, you know. Does it look like I care? This little... Anyways, I came here to get some peace and quiet. Mammon is building something in his lab, and he's being too loud. And Beelzebub won't stop playing his guitar. How tragic. You can't get your 12-hour nap. Hmm. For your information, I was actually trying to work on my latest doll. But because of the loud noises, I couldn't think straight. So why come here instead of going to the library? That's like your second favorite place to go. I was on my way there, but the door is locked. What? Eros attempts to open the door, and sure enough, it was locked. How did this happen? I think it's one of Mammon's puzzles. Figures. Any idea on how to get it open? I think it might have something to do with Hubris's snake painting. Oh no. You know how it used to have a jewel for its eye? Yeah. Well, it's not there anymore. Mammon used one of Hubris's paintings for his puzzle? Why would he do that? He knows that would make Hubris mad. Actually, no, wait, never mind. I just answered my own question. <laughs> Mammon's a little stinker. 
How come you haven't tried to solve it yet? I don't feel like it. Ugh. Anyways, I'm going to go take a nap. Good luck solving the puzzle, or whatever. <clears throat> okay, looks like we're on another search quest. Ah! Better be getting some H uh, some experience points for this. Oh. Oh dear. Ooh. Oh jeez. I just got a terrible chill because this looks like Ebe. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is an Ebe reference. I'm actually kind of scared to play Ebe again. You find a very large painting. It's difficult to tell what the subject of the painting is. It looks like a strange mesh of things. In front of the painting is a small empty vase. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe you should put something there. We, we gotta put a rose. Oh yeah. Maybe that rose from the statue, perhaps. Oh yeah. Ma- ma'am, may I have this, please? You notice a beautiful red rose attached to the statue's head. Ma'am, may I have this rose, please? Don't- don't come after me. Don't come after me. Something fell out of the vase. Ooh, it's half of a jewel. Okay. Hey, it's the jewel. Well, half of it. The other half must be around here somewhere. Let's keep looking. Mm -hmm. Ah, see, ah, um, it's Zach. Ah, he's so cute. Also, this is the second time you've popped up in a game and scaring me, Z. Quit it. As you and Eros venture further into the art gallery, you find yourselves in a small room full of more paintings. But the one that caught your eye was a painting of a stick figure. You raise an eyebrow, finding it odd that Hubris would have a painting like this in the gallery. Unless it's his very first painting? It's just a stick figure. What's so impressive about that? You know art is subjective and all, but this is ridiculous. What's next? Is there going to be a banana taped to a wall? <laughs> Why does Hubris have this painting? It looks like it was drawn by a kid. Well, excuse me. We can't all be Mona Lisa's now, can we? Ah! The painting! It talked! <laughs> Ow! Don't scream in my ear. Sorry. First it was flowers, now the paintings are talking. You hope none of the furniture starts talking. Well, of course I can talk. I'm doing it right now, aren't I? Um, Eros. Explanation, please? Hubris found it in the attic one day, probably left behind by the previous owner. He was going to throw it away, but then it started crying, and Hubris felt bad, so I put it in here. We think it's either a cursed or a haunted painting. There's a difference? You know, a lot of the art we find is either haunted or cursed. Very few of them are normal. I'm looking at you, Z. Wonderful. Wait, maybe this painting might know where the ribbon is. Um, excuse me, have you by any chance seen a lavender ribbon around here? A diamond-encrusted lavender ribbon. Mm -hmm. Anyways, have you seen it or not? Hmm, I think so. I remember this guy was holding it as he was walking to the next room. You hung your head, letting out a huge sigh. Great, so the ribbon isn't here either. Your ribbon is in another castle. At this rate, you'll never find the ribbon. Well, look on the bright side, Espoir. At least we won't have to spend hours looking around in here. Yeah, I guess you're right. Even though I, I wouldn't mind looking around here, I like art galleries. They're like one of my favorite places. Eros isn't wrong. At least you know it's not here, so it will save you the trouble and some time searching the area. I guess you're right, Eros. Of course I'm right, darling. You roll your eyes, but you couldn't help but smile. Yeah, yeah, no need to brag about it. It's not bragging if it's true. Hmm, that's debatable. Hey. You both couldn't help but laugh. 
It sucks that you still haven't found the ribbon, but at least you're having fun. Just the painting behind us is like, are you two flirting? Sorry to interrupt. You look back up at the stick figure. But I do have something else, though. What is it? Oh. The stick figure pulls out a shiny jewel. Well, half of one. Not sure, but it sure is shiny. Hey, that's the part of the jewel from Hubris's painting. We need that back, or else we can't open the door. But I want it! It's so shiny! But we need it. Hmm, tell you what. If you can find me something else that is shiny, I'll give you this ring. Alright, fine. We'll find you something shiny. Can't we just take it from him? We could, but then he wouldn't stop crying until we gave it back. I think I saw something shiny on the statue. Maybe we can give that to him. Is that statue gonna part with that ring? Ma'am? Ma'am, may I have this? On the statue's finger, you see a beautiful golden ring covered in diamond flecks. Mm -mm. Hold on a second. I have a bad feeling about this. You reach out to grab the ring. Just as you take the ring off the statue's finger, the statue suddenly comes to life. Uh-oh. It raises its spear and... Ah! Stabs you through the head. Alright. Fair enough. No, no, fair enough. Fair enough. Dead end. Thief. No, 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 it's, it's okay. On the far left, you spot a painting featuring a person with white fluffy hair. Their shirt has a low v-neck, displaying strange tattoos on their chest and neck. They're very beautiful, and you can't help but admire them. For some strange reason, you felt as though they were staring back at you. But that couldn't be. It's just a painting. Right? Do you see a painting featuring a man wearing pirate attire? He has a brown tricorn hat, a black mask covering the top half of his face, and a white dress shirt revealing his hairy chest. I gotta play that game at some point. He is very handsome, and for some odd reason, you felt as though you had met him before. Perhaps from a book, or maybe even a game. The statue is holding a long spear. It looks sharp. Ah, oh, what if we take the spear? Yes, yes, and then take the ring. Yes. I mean, she could still, like, punch me out. Will this do? You hold up the golden ring. Ooh, gimme, gimme! You hand the golden ring to the stick figure. Thanks. There you go, as promised. He gives you the half of the jewel. Thanks. Great, now we can get out of here. Eros stands before the big white snake painting. He fiddles with the red jewel in his hands, trying to fix it. Um, shouldn't we, like, get glue or something, or... Got it. Ooh. Eros puts the broken pieces together, causing the jewel to glow bright red. It looks brand new, like it was never broken to begin with. But, but how? How is that even possible? Magic. You wanted to argue more, but quickly closed your mouth shut. Magic. We don't have to explain nothing. You were too tired to do so anyway. This whole day has been weird. Mm-hmm. -mm. You've seen talking plants, talking paintings, and even fairies. You just want to get this whole thing over with. Eros carefully places the red jewel back into its place. Once back in its proper place, the art gallery door opens. Ah, finally. I wish Mammon didn't make it so complicated just to open a door. You nod your head and give him a small smile. Yeah, I think so. Great. He turns back towards the door, but stays in place for a few moments. He then turns back towards you. Hey, are you doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing alright. Why do you ask? It's just... This whole thing has probably been pretty weird for you. Talking plants and paintings, fairies... That's probably a lot to take in such a short period of time. I'll be honest, this whole thing has been pretty weird. But also, kind of fun. It's hard to explain why. I think it's because of you. You're fun to hang out with, Eros. You give him a soft smile. 
Eros looks surprised by your comment, as his face turns bright pink. I, uh, well, um... He tries to speak, but he keeps stuttering his words. W well of course I'm fun to be around. I always know how to have a good time. He laughs nervously. Anyways, we should get going now. Eros opens the door wide and motions for you to enter. You first, darling. Thanks. You enter through the door with Eros following behind. Mm -mm. You enter the room and are met with... Ooh! Buggos! Bugs! Lots and lots of bugs. Cages upon cages filled with different types of bugs. What is this? I thought the door led to the library. It's my insect room. You have to go through here to get to the library. Oh, it's his room. Aw, that's sweet. Mm. Wait. This room belongs to you? Yes, this is where I keep all of my precious babies. Seriously? The guy who whines about his hair getting messed up likes bugs? Him? Oh, it's kind of that's kind of sweet. You don't really seem to be the type of person who likes who would like bugs. I have an owl friend who would be terrified of this room. Yeah, I can understand that. It's not really something I go around talking about. People will think I'm weird if they found out I like bugs. I guess you're one of those people. No, I think it's pretty nice. No way, I think it's great. Oh, you, you do? Yeah. Do you think you could tell me about these little guys sometime? Yeah, sure. I would love to. You carefully walk through the room, trying your best to not knock over anything. Yeah. You really don't want any bugs crawling all over you. Or to be separated from their habitat. Hmm? You feel something on your head. You froze in place. The thing crawls down your head and stops at your shoulders. You slowly turn to see a... A... Precious baby! A large, cute tarantula wearing a pink bow. Not as terrifying as you thought it was going to be. Still kind of creepy, though. The tarantula blinks at you, eyeing you curiously. Espoir, did you find it? <gasps> Rose, sweetie pie, there you are. Oh, and it has my favorite name. Eros holds out his hand for Rose to climb onto. Come to daddy. Rose eagerly climbs onto his hand. She does a little dance as Eros holds her close. Precious. How are you, my precious baby girl? Doing fantastic, I hope. He gives her a small smooch on her head. Oh, Espoir, this is my baby girl, Rose. Isn't she the cutest thing you've ever seen? She's a... she's precious and adorables. You couldn't help but smile at the small white tarantula. Her big blue eyes look up at you as you reach over to pet her. She feels very soft, like a warm fuzzy blanket. Oh, Rose purrs as you pet her. Wait, purrs? It's best not to question it. Yeah, let's not question it. Yeah, she's pretty cute. I know, right? I found her one day while I was out in the garden. I was working on this huge project, but I was having trouble coming up with any ideas. No matter how hard I thought, my mind was completely blank. So I went out to the garden, thinking maybe some fresh air will help. And that's when I saw Rose. Her gorgeous webs inspired me to finally come up with a beautiful design. Wait, I thought tarantulas don't make webs. Regular tarantulas, but not Rose. She is different. Yeah, I can tell. She's very different. But a good kind of different. Helps make her stand out more. <laughs> yeah. Eros lets out a small giggle. You and Eros search and search the whole room, but there's no sign of the ribbon anywhere. All you found were five crickets, two praying mantises, four ladybugs, and one moth. You also found a pair of sunglasses. Not very helpful, but hey, at least you can look cool now. <laughs> Eros, I don't think the ribbon is here either.
Oh, what's the use? It's gone forever. Rivers of tears run down Eros' cheeks as he sobs. Oh no, your mascara will run. I'll never find my diamond-encrusted lavender ribbon. As if on cue, a red lounge chair comes out of nowhere. <laughs> Eros falls dramatically on it, his arms shielding his eyes as he sobs. Rose hands him a box of tissues. <laughs> he takes one out and dabs his eyes before blowing into it, making a loud trumpet sound. You should calm him down before he floods the room with his tears. You can already see a small puddle forming underneath him. I'm sure we'll find it. It'll, it's okay. Hey, come on, don't be like that. I'm sure we'll find it. But we've been looking for hours and we still haven't found it. Technically, it's only been an hour. And we will find it. You gotta believe. Do you remember where you went to next? Eros sniffs a few times, finally starting to calm down. Thank goodness, because the entire floor is flooded. Thankfully, it is very shallow. You hope that none of the insects drown in it. <laughs> Eros sits up in this chair. He rubs his chin as he thinks. I think... I think... I think I went back to my room. Your room? Yeah, I finally had an idea, so I went back to my room. Eros gets up from his chair and heads over to a lavender door with a white heart on it. He enters through the door, and you quickly follow after him. I then set my stuff down right... here. Eros pulls off a lavender silk cloth to reveal a small wooden basket full of sewing materials. And in that basket was the diamond-encrusted lavender ribbon. Gosh dang it, Eros! Who are you, me? Oh, my ribbon! It was here all along! Eros picks up the ribbon, showing it to you. I finally found it. <sighs> what? You mean to tell me that the ribbon we have been looking all over for was right here the whole time? Eros laughs nervously. I, well, uh, <laughs> um, oops. Guess I should have looked a little harder. <laughs> Please don't punch my face. You let out a huge sigh. No, you shouldn't get mad at him. It was a simple mistake. Besides, you sometimes misplay stuff, not realizing it was right next to you the whole time. Plus, it would be a real shame to damage his cute face. Absolutely. It's fine, Eros. Don't worry. The important thing is that we finally found the ribbon. Wait. You're not going to beat me up? No, I'm not. It would be hard for you to clean if your body was all messed up. Huh? Oh, right, the deal. <laughs> Eros makes a disgusted face as he sticks his tongue out. Ew, I hate cleaning. I can't stand getting all dirty. But a promise is a promise. Well, there is a bright side to all this. Really? What's that? You get to be around moi some more. I mean, this is everybody's dream come true, is it not? Hmm? Is it too late to ask one of the other brothers for help? <laughs> and, um, I get to be around you some more. Hmm? Did you say something? Oh, nothing, darling. Now then, before we begin, I need to get changed first. Changed? Well, of course. I want to look my best. Eros heads over to a closet. He starts rummaging through it, throwing all sorts of clothing across the room. Shirts, pants, skirts, dresses, shoes. Wait, was that a suit of armor he just threw? <laughs> Found it. Ah! Eros comes out wearing what looks to be a butler outfit, except the pants are very... Very... Very short. Man, is he even wearing black thigh-high tights with a garter belt? Stop! <laughs> I will be too distracted to clean. And why does he look really good in it? Okay, now I'm ready. Hmm? Are you alright, darling? 
You're looking a little red. Y yeah I'm fine. You tug nervously at your collar. Is it getting hot in here? Do you think the boots match well with this outfit? I wasn't sure if I should go with them or high heels. I... I think it looks good. Eros stares at your face, studying your expression. A sly smile creeps upon his face as he lets out a cute giggle. <laughs> Ooh, I see what's going on. Like what you see, darling? Uh, uh, we should get cleaning now. You quickly grab Eros's hand as you drag him out of the room. Eros lets out a small giggle. Cute! Aww. After what has felt like hours, the two of you are finally done with tonight's chores. Oh, my back hurts. Why did Hubris have to put so many chores on the list? You, on the other hand, were too tired to even speak. Everything in your body feels sore. You fall on your back, landing on Eros' soft bed. Ah, this feels nice. You feel the weight of the bed shift. You turn your head to see Eros lying down next to you. You feel his skin touch yours. It's icy cold. Suddenly, Eros wraps his arms around you, pulling you into a hug. You feel so warm, Espoir. His voice sounds drowsy. He smiles at you as his eyes flitter closed. Part of you wanted to get up so you could sleep in your own bed. After all, it wouldn't be good if one of the other brothers saw you two like this. <laughs> Especially if it was hubris. <laughs> but the other part of you didn't want to go. Let's stay here. It's nice here. Even though he feels cold, his touch feels very nice. You wrap your arms around him, pulling him even closer. He smells like lavender and lemons. Oh! Oh, that's like two of my favorite smells put together. Arrow snores softly as he nuzzles against your chest. He looks really cute like this. You couldn't help but smile softly at him. You let out a big yawn as you close your eyes. You fall into a deep sleep in Eros's embrace. Oh, how nice. How lovely. Hey, Lilith. Wake up, bestie! As for how you did for the first night, you did great! <clears throat> Lilith? What's wrong? Oh, nothing is wrong. Just, uh, be careful not to be too romantic around Eros. When Eros falls for someone, sometimes he'll fall pretty hard and become... clingy. Well, you got six more nights to go. Good luck. I'm rooting for you. Lilith.